What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the brand new Google Pixel 7 Pro. This is the Snow White Edition, which I think is the best color. Let me know down below which color you picked up, but this year around, all of the colors are awesome. If you're looking for a brand new Android phone, no matter what time you're watching this video, this should definitely be on the top of your list. Let's start off with some of the things that I like about this phone and a couple things that I think Google should fix. Number one, build quality is absolutely awesome. Everything just feels really, really premium. This aluminum camera bar is just something that I think is super awesome looking. Definitely a sexy phone in my opinion. Like Justin Timberlake said, they're bringing sexy back and the 7 Pro is proof of that. It's just a nice way to, to kind of bring your attention to the camera bar and I think the horizontal layout is just something that's super, super premium looking. Now the only downside to aluminum, of course, is it is a soft material and I've seen people kind of post comments on it getting scratched up. Thankfully, I'm not about this naked life on phones. I always throw on a case. So if you do throw on a case, you're gonna protect that camera housing for the long term. But no matter whether or not you choose to just use your phone as is or put a case on it, it's still a beautiful beautiful looking phone the fit and finish is just awesome definitely feels premium when you put in the hand and the weight distribution is on point as well so it's not heavier on one side versus the other google just did an awesome job another thing that they did really well this time around is they fixed the fingerprint scanner the 6 pro had some issues with the fingerprint scanner just being a tad bit too slow but this one has been improved and it's definitely definitely a step up from the 6 pro another step up is face unlock now face unlock looks really well let me look from behind the camera it works about 100% of the time when you're in good lighting, but that's about it. If you're in a dim situation, if you're if you're out in the club doing your thing and you're trying to unlock your phone with your face, it's not going to work. You need optimal conditions for this to work, and that's just a little bit disappointing. I thought Google was going to wow us this year around and give us a more secure face unlock like what's found on the iPhone. I think that would have been a huge, huge step up. So here's looking at the 8 Pro. I think it's about time that all Android phones had a secure face unlock system. It unlocks your phone, and that's about it. You can't use it for mobile payments you can't use it for online banking just unlocking your phone is not enough anymore the panel has also been much improved it gets up to 1500 nits and in direct sunlight this is no problem looking at you're never going to have a problem looking at your screen so if you're watching multimedia like your favorite jabbertech youtube videos you're going to be very happy with the screen and it's an ltpo screen which means it can drop down to 10 hertz to save battery life when it's not really needed to push that 120 hertz goodness but it is a great screen the blacks are black the contrast is there everything is there so i really like this panel and the speakers are nice as well let me give you guys a little bit of a listen weeks on and off is my daily smartwatch battery life fluidity fun fitness all of that good stuff let's check out the pixel watch together see what it's all about I would say the speakers have been much improved. Definitely a flagship level caliber right now. They, they don't really sound all that tinny. You get a decent amount of bass. Let's not, let's not get too crazy though when it comes to speakers. It is a smartphone, so you're not going to be hosting parties and jamming from your smartphone alone. But if you want to listen to some music or you want to watch a YouTube video without plugging in your Bluetooth headsets, the speakers are really, really awesome. Let's talk about the new processor that's in here. It's the brand new Tensor G2 processor. In terms of processing power, whether you're playing games or whether you're just doing everyday tasks, the G2 handles it like a boss, so no problems with the processor. And the phone starts at 128 gigabytes and goes up to 512 and at the $900 price point for the starting range. This is an awesome, awesome device. It's definitely undercutting a lot of competitors out there. And I think for those of you that, that want a phone that just works, it's kind of like the iPhone of Android. Everything works flawlessly. And I think that's Google's intentions. They don't want you to customize it too much. They don't want to make it a little bit confusing for the average consumer. They just want to give you a phone that's going to work. I'm not really missing any gimmicks, guys. I mean, sure, if you try and do split screen with, say, a Samsung, you get the these floating floating icons and you can have floating windows but Google again they just make it simple they give you a split screen and you can watch your YouTube videos and you can text your friend about it so again I think they do an awesome job of just kind of keeping things simple and you can switch it over to landscape as well resize it depending on the app once again split screen definitely comes in handy and I think Google did a really awesome job but the main reason let's be honest while you're picking up the Google Pixel phone is again coming back to this camera bar on the back and it's not just the camera bar it's the actual sensors this time so you get a 50 megapixel wide and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide. You get a 48 megapixel telephoto lens and you get a you get a bunch of different modes here, guys. The Google Photo app does a nice job and you see it just turned to macro mode. And I think Google's approach of keeping things simple for the average person, even for someone like myself, I know a lot of people complain there's no pro mode. And yes, most flagships do have a pro mode, but when's the last time you actually used it? I'm more of that point and shoot type of person, so I don't really want to mess with it. And Google does give you some presets to kind of 
simplify the fact that you don't have a pro mode. So there is a cinematic mode, which I haven't had a chance to test out just yet, but I will, and I'll post it over on social media. But you also do get other, other features that we're used to, like Photosphere, Panorama, and then you also get really cool portrait shots. The motion for the long exposure, which is what I use pro mode for, whenever I use pro mode, those five times in the last 10 years is already here in a preset. So you have the long exposure and you also have an action pan. So once again, they, they give you that preset and the night shots cannot be beat. Night shots are definitely one of the best in the business. I would say this whole camera system is the best in the business right now. Let me just show you some samples and let me know what you think about them down in the comments below. But I've been really impressed. The only place where the pixel kind of falls short, especially with Samsung is in the zoom. We only get up to a 30, 30X zoom. We don't get that 100 spy zoom. That might be coming in the 8 Pro, who knows, but at 30X, you're still getting some really, really clear images, and that's what it's all about. You want that clarity, you don't just want that zoom. So take a look at these photo shots and let me know what you think about them. Another feature that I really like on the 7 Pro is Magic Eraser, and it's just a very awesome tool, especially if you want to get rid of unwanted things. So for example, I took this nice photo in the park the other day, and, and there happened to be an iPhone on the table. This being an Android review, you might want to get rid of that iPhone. I, I think that's something that we probably would all agree on. It's time to get rid of this and kind of see what my photo will look like without it. Magic Eraser is not perfect, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely super close. Now I think this picture looks a lot better. What do you guys think about the before and after? That's just something that you can do with, with Magic Eraser, and I think it's just something super cool. Now camouflage is awesome as well. It'll kind of bring your attention away from whatever you circled. So now the iPhone is not as not as in your face. You, you see the coffee a little bit more. So if I show you the before, you can see that. So again, I like their little I like their little tweaks here. The Pixel perks that I like to call them are built into every single Pixel, whether you have the Pixel 6, the 6 Pro, the 7, the 7 Pro, and one of those features is the spam and call screen option. This just can't be beat, and I always miss it when I switch handsets and go to other devices. I get more spam and more telemarketers when I don't have my Pixel device, and that's why I always come back to this. Basically what this is going to do, your Google Assistant is going to answer the call for you, and then you're going to get a little transcript of why that person is calling, and you can decide to answer or not. Perfect when you're having a fight with a loved one, you can send them to your Google Assistant and piss them off even more. Trust me, I've done that. It hasn't really worked out for me, but it's still super fun to do that. And you also do have a hold for me option. How many times have you called the passport agency or whatever DMV and you're just on hold for like two hours? Or your Pixel phone, your Google Assistant is going to hold the phone for you. And when an actual human comes online, it's going to give you a little nudge to say, hey, someone's there, pick up the phone call. I've saved so much time with hold for me, it's not even funny. And a new addition this time is direct my call. So if you call someone, again, like DMV or your health insurance, you'll get a list of all the options that are available without even having to listen to those prompts. It's sort of like fast tracking to whatever prompt you need, whatever place you're trying to go, you can see it listed on your phone. And this is just an awesome feature. Once again, I definitely like this feature. But one of my favorite features is called Now Playing, and basically it's going to show you whatever song is playing around you, whether you're in the mall, whether you're in the bar, whether you're just at home, whether you're watching a movie, whatever song is playing around you, this is going to let you know what's playing. And you can go to your history, and you can see whatever songs were around you at, at a specific date. And then if you like a song, so let's just go to Super Freaky, you can add it to a, a playlist right away, you can create a new playlist, you can watch the YouTube video for it, or you can listen to it on YouTube Music. And you do have more options as well. You can share it to someone. So if you want to share this freaky girl song with your, well, freaky girl, go ahead and share that to them. 
I like now playing and I like all those pixel perks and even the pixel drops that come to your phone and give you extra extra features. When's the last time a manufacturer has given you extra features after you've bought the phone? Chances are that's very rare. Google's about that life and they're going to give you pixel drops from time to time just enhancing the overall functionality of your phone. So well done to Google with those pixel drops. There's a lot to love about the Pixel 7 Pro and the battery and 5G connectivity are one of those things that I enjoy. The 6 Pro after a little while, I don't know what happened. 5G just got buggy and 5G just drained the battery like nobody's business. I know a lot of people today that actually turn 5G off on their 6 Pro. I am happy to tell you on the 7 Pro, they fixed that issue. There's a new, there's a new connectivity chipset in here and this phone does not get hot. You can no longer fry an egg on the back of your 7 Pro. This is just warm to the touch like any other flagship out there. So if I show you some speeds, I'm not going to do a speed test right now because where I am it's actually pretty slow but if I show you my speed test from in from in New York City 666 megabits down was the was the fastest I ever got this phone is on par with other devices and it no longer takes forever to reconnect to service. The 6 Pro took a little while. If you came out of the subway, you'd notice sometimes it would connect, sometimes it wouldn't. This is just as fast as the 14 Pro, just as fast as my S22. So again, Google did the right thing. Google changed its chipset. You're probably wondering about battery life at this point. And I gotta tell you, battery's been very impressive on the 7 Pro. Even on those, even on those really heavy days where I'm taking a lot of videos and I'm taking a lot of photos and streaming music and YouTube in and trolling and doing all of these these things I was still able to make it through an entire day if you're on the lighter side sometimes we don't have all that much going on we're not really using our phone all that much you'll make it to a day and a half or at least I have now again battery life is subjective battery life depends on, on how strong your cellular connection is what you're doing your your brightness and whatnot I always leave mine on adaptive brightness I'm usually never on Wi-Fi except where I am right now Bluetooth's on all the time locations on all the time I like to use my devices as they were intended so I leave everything on NFC's on as well so you're gonna be very happy with this battery life one place that i have to knock google and google i'm sorry but charging speeds are just too slow for flagship specs bro this only charges at 23 watts at wired charging and 23 watts wireless if you have the pixel stand 2 if you don't have a pixel stand 2 i believe it drops all the way to 12 watts and that's just stupid slow this is going to take almost two hours to fully charge and in 2022 almost 2023 that's kind of unacceptable actually that's more than unacceptable in my opinion i think the pixel 7 pro should have some sort of fast charge and I'm not talking about warp charge like on the OnePlus. I'm not talking about anything like the Honor where it can charge in like 30 minutes from 0 to 100. I just want something a little bit faster. Give us like 45, 50 watts, something like that, and we'd be a little bit happier. So I, I knocked this phone just for the charging speeds. That's just something that I became accustomed to while using other devices in 2022 is just, just how long it takes to fully charge the 7 Pro. Now you guys might want to charge it overnight and it does kind of learn your pattern so it won't fully charge until you wake up and that's always a good thing to preserve the battery. What does all of this mean if you're in the market for a new phone? All of that means is the 7 Pro is a boss. The 7 Pro is the phone to beat at the moment. You're not going to get pixel drops from any other company. You're not going to get those pixel perks from any other company. You're not going to get this buttery smooth smoothness from any other company. It's just a really great, really great interface. Again, they keep it simple and I actually quite like that. There's no learning curve for all those gimmicks that you're not going to use. They don't throw in everything but the kitchen sink and see what sticks. And the camera can't be beat. The camera is definitely really awesome. Go ahead and buy the 7 Pro. You will not be disappointed. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments below. I'll catch you in another video.